What I want to talk today about is ball screws. What I have here is one that I ordered off of eBay. This is a rolled ball screw, which means that it was uh, created by you know going through a die and rolling it, um, as opposed to where they would just go with a grinder and grind it. The ground ones are uh, a lot more accurate, but they're also a lot more expensive. And for everything I got, I got this for under 200 bucks, and it's going to give me about two feet of travel. This is a 2505, meaning that this is a 25 uh, millimeter wide with a 5 millimeter pitch, meaning, uh, you know, difference between valleys and peaks, you know, there's 5 millimeters between. And uh, what I went and had to do is they'll, they'll go and grind this to your order. I went and had them double this part here. It was 20, so I would have had more thread. But I went and made them double it because I don't know if I'm going to, for my Z-axis, oh, that's, by the way, this is what this is for, the Z-axis. The other axes are going to be uh, rack and pinion. Anyway, so I had them double this because I don't know if I'm going to do a direct coupling. <laughs> so my voice broke. Direct coupling or uh, end up putting on a, uh, like a gear and then having the motor mounted off to the side to gear it down. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, let me go over. I did order this one with an extra ball screw uh, because I was going to make my own uh, anti backlash mechanism that I was going to show you. Turns out it might not have been necessary. I can't get any um, any kind of play out of these, so they're pretty much backlash uh, proof already, but just in case, I'll go ahead and show you what I built. And uh, one thing I'll say too is if you do get an extra one, ask them to get it to where the flanges are facing each other. This one was flipped, I don't know why, and so I had to undo it, and all the little balls from the ball screw, uh, ball nut fell out, and I had to repack them. I found a YouTube video that helped that out, so I might put a link to that, but uh, it was a pain in the butt, and I don't think I ever got them all back in, and it doesn't quite spin as uh, evenly as this one does. So, that being said, let me go over the parts. Like I said, here's the ball screw, the two ball nuts, and then, uh, let me see. Also, I had them add in a, uh, a bracket. A ball nut housing. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that without not being funny. So anyway, let's see if I can get this. So it goes in and it slides over one of the ball nuts like that. And then that will bolt, bolt down to the plate, hence giving us the ability to move it down the ball screw. And also, it comes with a, uh, a fixed block. This is the bearing, it's all fixed. I believe it goes over on this end, uh, slides down, and then goes over, and then you see those threads. Well, I don't want to get it all the way on there. You see those threads, that's where this little nut that comes with it, I believe. Uh, looks like there's even a set screw on there. And then the other end has the free uh, pillow block. What this means is like, let me see if I get this out, hold on, oops, sorry. So here is the bearing, and that should go down here, and I'll tap that into place, and it allows it to slide up and down inside this one uh, due to heat uh, wind friction, so that way, you know, otherwise things would start binding. And let me see if I still have it, yeah. So here's the little C-clip. I definitely don't want to lose that clips over here once I put the bearing in. And also I got them to bring me, or send me a coupler, and uh, the one they had was bored down to a 10 millimeter, but I went ahead and had them uh, board this one down to 6.35 millimeters, which is a quarter inch, which is the size of my shaft. So in case I want to do a direct linkage at first, until I can get my gear down system going, I'll be able to connect it. It's a helical cut one, so that it'll bend and flex, but it still won't introduce backlash and set screws to lock everything in. So, I think I've got that all pretty well explained. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and cut right now and then do a time lapse of me putting everything... Oh, wait, 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 forgot. This is the thing I built. <laughs> um, so, this is going to slip onto the housing of the other screw, or ball nut. And what that does is that then links them together without them being mechanically linked. So. A little bit of play, but this way I'll be able to. Let me show you. I uh, can't believe I forgot all this. 
So I messed with different lengths of screws and spring sizes, and I was really frustrated about how I was going to actually do this, and it turns out the best way to do it, I was thinking about putting a spring in here to push these apart. It turns out it's easier to put a spring on the outside and push them together. It serves the same purpose of reducing backlash. So I'll have one of these on each side, and it's about like, you know, these are six M6 screws, and this is like probably a quarter inch spring inner diameter. Um, basically, I, I messed with, I got a pack of like, you know, assorted springs from Home Depot, and I just went through and tried to find the best combination of screw length versus uh, spring. I mean, I can show you the other combos I tried. And that ended up being like a 75 millimeter screw that I'm using uh, to get through this three quarter inch aluminum bar, which is the only thing I have. This is quite beefy. It doesn't need to be that big. Probably not. You can make something smaller if you want to, but it's all I had on around me. So different combinations of springs until I found one. So I'll go ahead and show you in time lapse me putting this all together. Hopefully it'll go off with a hitch. I had to pause it and undo some of the work I had done because I forgot to leave these ones empty. You have to leave the top and bottom ones without screws in them, so I had to take everything apart. So anyway, I'll resume it. All right, so I thought I'd give a little post-mortem. Um, some things I added that were off screen were I put in these, if you can make them out, these lock washers, because it seems like these bolts were coming undone. It seems to me if all your the thread that you have is on the nut that you're using, it's probably a good idea to use lock washers. Uh, otherwise, things like these, I don't use lock washers on. If somebody out there can tell me otherwise, uh, let me know what a good, good rule of thumb is for using lock washers. I ended up adding a bunch of washers to the springs. I might have to get stronger springs, but right now it seems to be okay. There's a little bit of play, ever so slightly. I don't know if that's going to make any effect. But, uh, also, I got this on uh, and screwed in and everything. I had to tack it in with a hammer, which I know some people are going to cringe at, but I was very careful. Same thing with this side. And the pain about this one was getting that C-clamp, if you can make it out right there with those two little holes, onto there. I ended up having to take it off camera and just using needle noses and wiggling, wiggling, wiggling until it finally clicked into place. Anyway, so it's looking pretty mean. I think I like it. Uh, let me know your opinions if you see if I did anything wrong. Thanks a lot. Bye.